Well, hey, what's up, everybody? This is Julian Garcia from Worship and Creative. Today we have a guest. His name is Chase Wagner, and we're so excited to talk to him just about his journey and all that God has done in his life as a creative, creative pastor. Um, we have a few particular questions that we're going to be asking him, and we're going to be talking about longevity, longevity in church, and just sticking around with the people that you love and that you're with and that you're serving with. And um, he's also part of a church plant that has been super successful, and they're moving forward. And you know. It, they have their ups and downs. They have things that they've gone through. We would love to talk about those things as well. And uh, you know, above everything else, Chase is just one of those guys that when you talk to him, you feel better about yourself. You're just, you, you just get off the phone and you go, I feel better about myself now because Chase spoke truth into my life and he is a nice person. <laughs> and he's got a great smile too. So that's what we got to say about that. But hey, we're going to invite Chase in right now. And as we're talking, hey, um, if you're in this podcast at all, whether you're listening on iTunes or you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Don't ever forget another podcast ever again. So um, as we invite him in, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions in the messaging part of the whole pro whether you're in podcast or you're on youtube ask questions we'll do our best to get back to you and answer those questions for him but um here's chase wagner and let's get started what's up what what's up? up chase what's up? how you doing dude coming to you live from gray city music studios in lakeland florida it's a little messy in here today uh, <laughs> we're doing some uh tracking for for a new little live project we're working on and overdubs that is so that's awesome, man. What a, what a fun journey to be a part of uh, making music and people listening to it. And I don't know about you, but when I create something and someone takes it and uses it and it speaks to them, it, it brings like life to my soul. It brings life okay. to my creative soul. And I can imagine for you, the songs that you've written, especially uh, what was the song that you guys did and Jesus Culture picked up? What was that one? Uh, Living with a Fire. Living with a Fire. Like something yeah. like that. I've been like speechless. I don't know how you felt, but I would have been speechless when that yeah. happened. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're inspiring me, man, with what you're doing with Worship and Creative and this even this whole podcast thing we're doing right now. So cool. <laughs> Super <laughs> fun. It is. Yeah, of course, bro. And if you don't know who Chase is, he is the worship pastor at Grace City Church in Florida. And, uh, you know, we've gotten to see the journey from going to Florida just to be a part of a college out there and then going and planting the church and making this his new home. And, um, and, and I don't know about you, but when I watch someone go through something like that, that's a lot of change that happens. And that can be super wearing on the mind and the soul and chase is just dead he stayed steadfast and that's why i asked him to be on this podcast because he's one of those guys that when you go through journeys and you go through tribulations you go through things in your life as a creative it's so easy to let our minds go to a place that maybe you're insecure you're tired you get burnt out you know all those things whatever it is um he stays steadfast even though i know it hasn't been easy i know it hasn't been uh, a walk in the park if you, if you know what i'm saying but totally. He's one of those guys that he can speak truth to us. And so, um, Chase, if you could, could you just walk us through real quickly the last nine years of your life of what that what that has looked like going from our little city, Puyallup, Washington, yeah. to where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. So Julie and I were from the same church. Uh, it was Puyallup First Grand Motion Church now. We both just have a history there. That's where kind of I grew up and learned how to do the live worship recording, you know, write songs kind of thing under some guys like Chad Veach, uh, Andrew Gard, yeah. and kind of in high school really learned how to do that from 14 to 17, 18 years old. And they invited actually some guys from, from Hillsong to come through and help kind of train us and develop us. Um, so we were really blessed to be a part of that. And there was people there like Luke Brett Van Grohl, Emmy Rose, who's with Bethel now, yeah. Um, that really, like really an impactful time that we really got to see God do some amazing stuff. And then I went to college. I went to Biola in Los Angeles, actually, to finish up my undergrad for the last two years. And when I was graduating, Andrew was like, hey, I I'm thinking about taking this job as a campus pastor at this small Assemblies of God school, it's like 2,500 2, students called Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida. And he's like, I'd pay you enough. You can marry your girlfriend. And um, they want to do, <laughs> they want to do, you know, annual live Apple albums. So for me at 22, that was like, wow, that was, you know, the, the dream. And so we moved down and it was a, a small, um, you know, bad website 
uh, <laughs> it's awesome as a god school um, that had an amazing history and an amazing you know people have been crying out to god from that place for a long time actually yeah. um and so but we got to kind of develop a youth culture and and you know amazing college ministry on monday night so we ended up seeing some nights almost two thousand people every monday night we do a 7 p.m and a 9 p.m because lakeland's a college town yeah and so we'd had you know three four major universities in town so kids were coming getting saved baptized and then after about like three four years of doing that we were like we should probably do this for more than uh, you know, 18 to 22 year olds. Um, and so we planted Gray City Church and that was six years ago. And uh, yeah, exactly what you said. Lots of highs, lots of it. Like we're all looking at each other's highlight reels and yeah. man, there's there's a, a lot of tough times and being on the other side of the country from your family and just really, you know, having to feel like even in America, you know what I mean? Like when you go to do ministry, you're doing it as a yep. mission, you know, and like you're called to, you know, God speaks through open doors. And I just saw that for myself at 22 of being like, man, I think this is where God wants me. And, um, and man, we had, we had fun. And so it's been fun being able to do that with, with Andrew, the church has worked. I did both for, uh, for a while overseeing SC worship, which we started in 2012. And then, um, but then probably five years ago, stepped down from that, uh, to just purely focus on, uh, the church here at Grace City. And, and it's been fun, man. It's been a, been a challenge, uh, but, but it's been a blast for sure. Wow. Wow. And so you've been, you've been with Andrew for quite a while. You knew him from Puyallup. You knew yep. him from college. Uh, yep. He came into our college ministry. Yep. He came into our college ministry at Puyallup Four Square. And so I probably met him, was playing electric guitar for his college group when I was 14, 15 years old. Um, yeah, so I yeah, known that guy for a long time. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's, and, and I think for me today, as we're talking, bro, like that's one of those things that you don't see too much of anymore. Um, you see it in some of the big churches, like like Hillsong. You know, the, sure. a lot of those guys have been there for a long time. Um, but for the most part, when you look at churches and you look at leadership, leadership is like is like a revolving door, and people are just mm -hmm. coming and going constantly all the time. And and I get yeah. it; people move on, and and it's it's hard to keep people in place. But I think it's super important to to be in a place and find the place where you can have longevity where you yeah. can truly be with the people and minister to your city and call it home together. And right. that's what we've seen. That's what we've seen with you. Um, and a lot of you guys with, with Andrew. So can you, can you just tell me like, what is the secret sauce? Like what, what are you guys drinking? What's in your water that makes this happen? That's because that's um, you just don't see it anymore. And I would sure. love, like, I know a lot of people out there are like thinking, I have no idea. I've been at this church for a year and a half and I want to bounce, you know, like yeah. what does it take to have that longevity that you've had? Right. I mean, I, I talk about this somewhat frequently of that. Like it takes time to put roots down. So yeah, no matter what great creative content, let's say like whatever your dreams are, right. If that's like making music in church or like having amazing services in church or right? creative, creatively, this is a creative podcast, but like, you know, what, making amazing film in church, like whatever that is for you, that stuff a lot of times doesn't happen and you don't have that synergy overnight. It takes time to put roots down in creative community and and those to, to make something that really creates real fruit. And so I think you really learn that when you plan a church of that, like everybody's coming from somewhere else. So yep. Everybody's coming from a background that's more conservative or more liberal than wh what you're starting. You know yep. what I mean? Like nothing's going to be sure. grace, like grace city. Everybody's coming from a theology that's more conservative or liberal politics are more conservative. Like, so everybody, as people are coming from either good experiences, bad experiences. I had a great time last year. So I had a bad time. And so everybody is coming from a different background. And so you really have to be patient. You know, you're saying, yeah, a year and a half at a church. It's like, yeah, you're not going to feel that in a year and a half. You're not going to no. feel that creative, um, you know, like, they they even call it fat like in communication they call it fatic communication fatic yeah. communication is the communication about nothing so yep. uh, a real they say like a real friendship doesn't actually exist until fatic communication is a part of it which is an inside joke which is you know that funny thing you say to each other that's the stuff that actually makes a friendship and a real relationship yeah. So it takes years to have that phatic spelled P A. If you want to look up, you can read more about it. P H A T I C. But it's like, yeah, that's 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 part of it. It just takes time to put roots down with people, and um, 
and then easier said than done, right? Like, and I think you talked about it a second ago, you said serving a city. That's really, Christ said, that, man, I want you to have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. That's the goal. Not stadium tours. Yeah. Not, um, not whatever that is out, you know, number one's like number one gold records, whatever it is. That stuff's cool. And maybe it's a goal in a, in a way of achieving music. But I hope the goal for your life, Julian, my life as Chase of this, I just want to have life abundantly and not yeah. in a self-serving way, but because Christ told me I could and that life with him is the Zoe life, that it is the best. And so to really focus on, I want to have the best life possible, not the like coolest ministry, not the coolest Instagram, not the coolest you know, yep. whatever. All that stuff is fun. If that stuff stays fun, that's actually really fun. But Super fun. You can't put that above having a, a Zoe life and having that with your family and having that with the people that you live. And so as soon as that stuff kind of starts going wacky, uh, yeah, that that's kind of so we've tried to keep the plain things the main things. Yeah. Uh, easier easier said than done though. And uh and especially if you're if you're doing relationships for a long time, man, there's there's hurdles and you, you're going to go through things like 2020 where it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, like me and Andrew probably didn't have the same political standings or like, like the same ideas about these controversial topics down the voting, like down a voting card. You know what I mean? So it's like when people are coming at our church or it's, it's like, we're going to respond to things differently. We're going to, if you're talking about the relationship between a worship pastor and a senior pastor. Yeah, for sure. So you have to be patient with each other and, and man, I, I don't know if I would, you know, address things that way. And then go, well, it's not my role to even say that, right? If he's the, if for he's sure my employer. Uh, so the whole thing is is not easy and it's sticky and it's complicated, but I think it's worth it. It's worth it to put time down in relationships. And all relationships are risks, right? Sorry, I'm on a little bit yeah. of a ramp right now. But it's like all relationships are risk and that like my, my relationship with the, my wife is a risk. Like, but you for have sure. to put the time in and it's but might as well go for it than not. Yeah, that's so true. And you kind of hit you hit something that resonated so much because I especially in my world and people that I'm talking to all the time, I hear people always say like, "Hey, well, for instance, worship and creative. The amount of messages I get from artists who are sending me their work saying, "Please post my work. Yeah, it deserves wow. to be seen. Like, please post wow. it." Um, that mentality is exactly what we have to steer away from because we're we're not here. I'm not here to be seen. I, I'm going to be honest with you, Chase. <laughs> I am not here to be seen. The only thing I want to do is everything I can to make a difference in at least one person's life. If I make the difference in one person's life and it it sends them to heaven, thank you, Jesus. I did my job. Like that's yeah. how I feel. And so so worship and creative, like that was never meant to be Julian and creative. It was always meant to be what can Julian do to help the creative community grow and be closer to God, number one, and have a healthy relationship with him and stay right. healthy in their mindset and their heart. Like that's what matters. I, I can care less if there's a hundred thousand followers or if there's 10, like that does not matter. Yeah, it really doesn't. But at the same time, I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that this community grows in their relationship with the Lord every single day. Cause you know, right. I may not, I may not be full time in the church anymore. I wasn't, I was full time in the church for 15 plus years. Yeah. Yeah. I would say 10 of those years probably weren't about the Lord completely. 10 of those mm -hmm. years, I probably wanted to be on the bigger stage. I probably wanted to sing in front of 10,000 people, and I'll be honest with you, when I sang in front of 17,000 people, it didn't feel any better. It, there was nothing. <laughs> I left that stage going, okay, well, that was not what I expected it to be for me. And that was the kind of the moment where I was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I even worried about this kind of stuff? Why right. does this matter? You know? But you're focusing on the local church, focusing on your community. It's not about the big stage. It's not about, you know, traveling the world and letting people hear your music. Like, that's cool and all, and it's fun. But it's about the local church, and it's about getting people to say yes to Jesus. Like, that's that's right. what we're here for, right? And you hit that on the nose so good. And I, I know I asked you about longevity, but really that all comes down to 
sticking with where you're at, where God planted you, you know, and, and he's planted you, planted you there. And what you're doing for the local church in, what is it? Lakeland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What you're doing for the local church in Lakeland. That's what matters. Thanks man. At the end of the day, I always tell pastors this about their sermons. I'm like, Hey bro, listen, your sermons are great. Love them. At the end of the day, they're not the end all be all of your relationship with the Lord right. or your ministry. At the end really? of the day, the people that you minister to, they're going to remember most likely the conversation you had with them face to face rather than the message that you preached to them 20 times. I'm totally. going to tell you, they're not right. going to remember the message, but they're going to remember you showing up when their baby was born. 100%. You're going to, sh- they're going to remember when their son was sick and you showed up to pray for them. That's right. the thing that they're going to remember. That I feel like that causes longevity in our relationship with the Lord and in our ministry in what we do. Totally. You know? And so I, I, I just commend you for sticking to it, even when it's been hard, you Thanks, know, buddy. and you know, you've been, we, like you said, we, we see this highlight on Instagram and Facebook, whatever, and everything looks honky dory. But right. at the end of the day, like, bro, you've, you've gone through things that people don't see and you've had to be, get in your prayer closet and really ask the Lord, like, how am I going to yeah. get through this and how am I going to push through? Yeah. Um, and that steadfast heartbeat that you have, I, I just want people to grab a hold of that for themselves as well. You know, that's great, man. But, I, I think you said it as far as like, yeah, okay. I, you were worked for a church for 15 years. You're like, cool. 10 of those years, Maybe I wasn't in the right spot. And then maybe about certain things. I'm sure you're in the right spot about a lot of other good things. And so I think sure. that's part of it too, of like being patient with yourself and going, yeah, yeah dude, if you're in it for the long haul, you're going to have seasons of discouragement that could last years. Like yeah. and seeing and thinking long, you know what I mean? And thinking like, man, it's, it's, it took five, six years of us making music at SU for people to care about it. I think yeah. like my town back home cared about it. It's like, cool. Like we're, it, we've been working at Grace City Music now for five, six years. We're just hitting a bit of a tipping point now again of like, oh man, we're getting some good listens. Some people like are caring. Like that's just starting to happen now. So really taking that time and, and you got to overcome a lot of discouragement in the meantime. And then being patient just with yourself and going, yeah, exactly what you said. Man, I, I wasn't healthy during that time. Maybe there was, maybe there was those two years when I was, doing both SEU and Gray City where I was like, dude, that wasn't healthy and wasn't good. And I probably could have navigated a lot of conversations, a lot of lifestyle choices for myself. Yeah. Better. <laughs> Cause yep. hindsight like 2020. You know what I mean? And so I think to look at that and go, man, I, I, I could have done things better, but that's okay. And, and to keep, and keep trucking. Yeah. I mean, you get, you get caught up in the business of what you're doing, you know, and, it's so easy to get lost in your craft and what you're doing and how hard you're working and what direction you're going that you almost forget about, okay, who am I really? You know, am I, am I Julian Garcia, the husband and the father, or am I Julian Garcia, the guy who's trying to pastor everyone else? You know, like I really have to bring myself to the place of who am I really? And really I'm, I'm, I have to remember number one, I'm the son of God. Like that's who I am. That above everything else, everything, all else fails. I'm a son of God. And that's yeah. going to stick with me for the rest of my life, no matter what happens. Number two, I have to be a good father and a good husband. Oh, yeah. And that's my oh, number, yeah. that's my number two focus. Like I, my, my relationship with the Lord and my family, if yeah. those aren't healthy, then everything else fails, you know? Yeah. And quick, quick, quick story. I'd, I'd love to just give off of what you yeah, just please. said. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> probably three years ago, you know, anyone that's been involved in the church plant that's listening you do everything early on. So I was the second hire at the church after Pastor Andrew as the creative pastor. So that was website, newsletter, order of services, all of social media, <laughs> photo, video teams. We were doing a video a Sunday for transition. I mean, like, that's a, and then it's like, oh, okay, what do I love to do? I love to write music and, and make worship. Okay. So, so that's a whole other thing. And I've really gotten to a point probably three years ago where I was like, I can't do this anymore, period. I mean, the showing, we were doing five services on a Sunday. We had just gotten a bigger building. It was actually kind of cool. And it was like, but I kind of like, I'm miserable. And I'm, I'm, I don't like this at all. 
And I remember like really looking at two other places in America that, that we were thinking about going and a couple, two different churches and really went fasting prayer mode and went, God, like, what do you want me to do? And, and I need to hear that word from you of what it is, where to go and what to do, because I, I don't, you know, it's like, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. And really fasted, food, prayed. <clears throat> and I finally heard from God. And what I heard was the phrase, be a good dad. Mm. And that was it. <laughs> and there was no <laughs> other help on like, well, like, what am I, like, where should I, we move the fam? And like, what should, like, what do I do with the music? And like, I was having some success with some personal songwriting stuff. And it was like, am I supposed to move to Nashville? Like, am I supposed to like, and it was just like, be a good dad. And it was like, wow. okay, that is for this next season of what, you know, the next couple of years were going to be was yeah. like, that's what I need to do. And that I need to have them around their family. My kids around their family. I need to like make sure my schedule works for them and to be there for them which kept me playing here another three years and like things got better at the church. I eventually that led to conversations with my lead pastor of, of going, um, man, I want to just be a worship pastor, us bringing on somebody, me taking a pay cut, bringing on to help me bring someone else on to be the head of communications, who was my admin at the time, who is wow. had a background and taught broadcast at SEU. And so it's like, God did all that. And he did yeah. heavy lifting and like knew how, how all that was going to work. What I had to, do was be a good dad and wow. uh, and so that's i think really really yeah what are you called to do and what are, yeah what are your assignments via that identity stuff that you were talking about and then going yeah. and like out all that other stuff if you're living the zoe life because i remember i remember saying the page all the time during that season of going i have the best life outside of work right now i was like i love being at home i love yeah. my friends i love what yeah. we do we have a day off like when, like, I look, like, it's just the home life is so good. And I love, but like work was like, ah, Ugh. and so it's like, but that home life and my actual life was really, really good. And so like realizing that's, what's got to work will follow suit. And if I can make changes, God is going to make those changes, but me focusing on being a good dad at home and that being what god had called me to do in that season and then then the pandemic happened then all of a sudden i was like oh my gosh i'm so glad we stayed where we were where we were where we stayed and and decided to keep trucking and, and god knew that he knew all that stuff yeah so true so true bro i think that's i love the fact that he didn't give you any other answer besides be a good dad because it's so e like i said earlier it's so easy to get caught up in what we do that we almost lose who we really are, you know, and right. at the, at, like think, and I always tell people this. So video editing, for instance, I had a team of video editors at one point, And one of the guys would constantly uh, nitpick every little detail that details that 99.9 .9 of the world will never know or see or care. Right. And I'm, and I'm like, bro, like you're killing yourself over this one little thing that no, nobody's going to care about. And, but it was such a big deal. Right. And I remember just sitting down with him and I'm like, Hey man, listen, uh, I just need you to understand something. And I, I don't want you to kill yourself over what you're doing and the work that you're putting into here at the church. Uh, you, you need to be a, a healthy individual. And right. right now you're killing yourself, especially over something that nobody else would ever see. Um, right. When you, when you're on your deathbed, do you think you're going to think about this video? No. Right. Totally. When you're when you're at the end of your life, you're retired, you're spending time with your family. Are you going to be worried about this video that you produced? No, you're not. It's a big deal right, right now. Yes. And it's it's already great. But man, move, move forward, move on and allow right. yourself to have some freedom in your mind, in your work so that you can just have a normal life. Like, I think that's one thing like we we tend to get so caught up in in our church life that we forget that we have to have a normal life with our families. And that's, that's probably one of the reasons I, I decided to step down from the local church because mm -hmm. I, I, this year I went to Easter service with my family and I sat and I just, I was just with them in right. Christmas. Like we, I literally just sat with my family. I've never done that. Yeah. The 15 years that we've been married and we've been in ministry, I've never ever just sat with my family and went to church and right. 
just spent time with him. And it was, it was freeing for me because I was able to let go finally, you know, I've always mm. been so busy thinking about all the details and, and then I have to show up to the family party later, you whatever. And that's, oh, and that's totally fine. That's oh, the life I chose and it's, and it's great. But this season of my life, same thing. I just feel like the Lord has called me to just be a good husband and be, be a good, on, be there, be attentive, you know? And, and it's been, for me, it's been the most freeing and, and best season of my life and the worst because I miss, I miss it terribly, you know? So there's sure, two, sure. there's this weird balance that I'm in, but sure. man, that longevity though, when it comes to being with your family, being with your people, I think there's so many balancing acts that you have to figure out that as you're do as you're figuring these things out, you have to decide on what's the most important thing and put that first and then make a list. I'm the, I'm a list guy. I have to make lists. Yeah, totally. When I make yeah. lists, I'm a, my brain's everywhere and I'm trying to do too much. Right. And when it comes to this, I have to just com completely write it all down and do all that. But that's a good story, bro. I really appreciate you sharing that. No, it's so good, man. Yeah. It, br it brings some um, reality to someone like you. So um, when it comes to church planting, what was your biggest struggle as as a guy who's volunteering his time and yeah. trying to give his all and, you know, also like needing to pay his bills and provide for his family. <laughs> yeah. What was I, it like I, for you as a creative? I think the, the one day off thing was, was really tough. You know what I mean? As far as like, okay, we're gonna, we're, you know, we're going to, I'm going to work Monday through Friday and actually get paid. And then, and then Sunday we're going to, we're going to go all the way. And I'm not just showing up to volunteer I am volunteering, but not in the way that a normal volunteer was putting on the whole shebang, prepping yeah. that during the week, staff meetings maybe before. Uh, so it took a lot of of hard work, man, and a lot of um, – yeah, like I said, I probably wasn't um, – help. like I probably needed to work out more during that season. I probably uh, – my diet probably wasn't what it, it needed to be. Um, but that, that, that was, yeah, really, really, that was definitely the hardest thing about it was just pu pulling a church out of, out of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but luckily yeah. we were doing it with guys that we really loved and not just the lead pastor relationship, but that other tier of peer to peer, you know, guys like John Lorenzo, who I've known since yeah. I was 17 and guys like Bobby Walker, who have known since we were, you know, 14, like. So we, we did have these uh, relationships that it's like, well, we're going to hang out anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, uh, yeah. So it's like, might as well work on something creative. And, uh, and then you have these really, you have these glimpses of like, then you start doing church and you have these glimpses of like, man, that was such a great service. Or like we met for this prayer meeting and it was packed and it was like, ah, and it's like the energy was so there and it was like presence of God. And it was like, man, so great. And then you have those times where it was like, man, I sweat through my shirt loading up <laughs> and like and not that many people can like not them you know it's like i remember our, like one of our first interest services because we we're doing these college nights with a uh, thousand two thousand people so i was like oh we're gonna have a thousand people at least and it's like yeah we had 300 and something people come to the interest service which is like in, in in to a lot of people it's like oh my gosh amazing but to me it's I was amazing like, yeah where is everybody and like be wow. going, oh man, I just sweat through my shirt all day. And it's like back to normal work tomorrow. And so like there's, <laughs> so you have these really encouraging moments also with these really discouraging ones. And I think if we're talking about longevity, man, just putting one foot in front of the other and just going, man, we're going to see God do something. We're going to see God do something. I'm going to stay in the word. I'm going to keep, going to keep writing. I'm going to keep, and like just one foot in front of the other yeah. uh, is, is going to get you somewhere. It is. It is. And what would you, so when it came to the church planting, cause you mentioned like not being on the best diet or working out and you know, stuff like that. So when it came to the church planting and that lifestyle, if you 32 year old Chase Wagner can talk to yourself nine years ago or how many years, six years ago when you were planting the church, what would be the thing that you get? Hey bro, you would sit yourself down and you would tell yourself to help you out to help yourself out a little bit. I think that there's an end in sight, right? So I, I, I wish you could go, hey, God's going to show up this way. This many people are going to start coming. You're going to be able to get a job at this time. You know, it's like things are going to get kind of weird at your old job, but like you're going to be able to jump and do this. Like I, I would encourage myself because <laughs> all those things are just eighth decisions you're making up on the dope. Stuff's getting weird. I got to go like over here. I got to, 
like all that stuff but it's like i yeah i wish i could go back and go hey you're gonna be fine but then where's the faith right it's like that's what that's what faith is um yeah. so so there's definitely that and i think that like i would just tell myself man like your your life and your health are the most important thing kind of what you, you were talking about earlier it's like man my my lot if i'm not healthy nobody's healthy if i'm not healthy uh great city music's not gonna work so uh, true yeah it's like it's not gonna if, if i'm not it all comes from from who i am and and so there's definitely easier ways to do it and especially there's there's ways of working smarter and not harder yeah that maybe i wish i could have encouraged myself to do <laughs> yeah i always i always think about that that's one of those questions i ask myself a lot i'm like man if i could have just realize this if i could have just changed my mindset here uh things could have been different but i'm grateful for everything i go through because i've it's right. a learning opportunity you know so mm -hmm. so don't live in the past i asked that question yeah. not to live in the past but more just like okay if someone were in that situation right now what would be helpful for them and uh how can they stay healthy in that in that season of their life you know because it it can it can go downhill pretty fast without you even realizing it and i feel like when you're going downhill you you pick up momentum without even realizing it and before you know it, you're going 100 miles per hour the wrong wrong direction you know and yeah. so um that's that's let's stay away from that people we don't yeah, want to we don't want to go down. when you're healthy everybody else is going to see that and want to be a part of that exactly yeah which could be good and a bad thing yeah it's so like, true it's, it's not just the man i want to have the most dynamic internet content and i want to put that out and i want to have the most <laughs> dynamic mastered live single that people are gonna listen to and they they're gonna in live video and they're gonna want to do that song if if life at the church level and what people see you doing your day-to-day -day is not cool or not a good vibe or not healthy they don't really aren't going to really everything is so intertwined at this point. So yep. it's like you know, the the way that we've also been able to grow Gray City Music and maybe it's grown slower in some ways than it could have probably due to me of going, man, like I want my life to to not just look awesome, but be awesome. And it's yeah. like if I if my life at home with my wife and my kids is awesome and healthy and my relationship with my coworkers actually awesome and healthy yeah. that's going to be a magnet for volunteers people moving across the country to be a part of the music uh that sort of stuff so true so that's so true bro we um one of those things that i've dealt with and i've i've recently dealt with is just poor leadership that um affected my life in a huge way you know and yeah. And I'm still mentally battling those things, you know, and I, and it's, it's a daily battle. I literally have to go to the Lord every single day and, yeah. and not get mad, you know, and, and, and be in a bad place. And yeah. I think, I think if I was led well, it would have been different, you know, and if, if there were, if circumstances and stuff like that would have been different when it came to leadership that were in charge of me, um, my mindset would be in a totally different place. And so I would love to hear you just your perspective on um, being a leader over, you could even mention that you had to take over all creative doing videos and social media and worship and service planning and all that stuff. And obviously those things involve a lot of people. And so I would love to hear your perspective as a leader of what it takes to keep that persistence in pushing people forward and being someone worth following because it's, it's tough, man. You're one person. And so how do you lead all those people down a path that they should go and keep, and keep them healthy at the same time while you're still focusing on yourself? It's, it's, that's one of those juggling acts that I think is super hard. And uh, I've personally have felt the effects of it and I wish I could have had, it could have been different, you know? Yeah. What would that look for you? Yeah. I think Julian, that's where like the Christianity has to work. The grace has to work and grace is not because our name, our church is called Grace City, but being like grace is this thing that I have to have for myself Mm -hmm. and for others uh three john maxwell 360 degree leader i i have to give grace 
a 360 degree treatment yeah. all the time because at the end of the day it's like dude i know every week there's a leader that's disappointed with me because of maybe i didn't have the time for them that week yeah. that they yeah. maybe they needed but what's my what do i need? i need them to have grace for me that my call from god my marching orders is to be a good dad and i i need them to have grace for me of like dude at the end of the day I got to take care of my family. I have to be present. They, yep. my, they, the babies need their daddy. They do. And, it's like, and I was like, dude, I would love to be having a coffee and to stay out late and front porch with so many dudes on my team. Like, I, and, and that's, I would love it. But the fact that is like every week that goes by, there's somebody that probably could have really used my voice and my time. And I would have really actually enjoyed it. But I, I have to do work God's called me to do some of our biggest priorities, some of the stuff that we were just talking about. Yep. And the same, I have to put that grace to the, per, you know, it's like end of the day, Andrew not waking up and going to bed thinking Chase's call on his life, his song, his songs that need to get heard is, is him as an artist, even his family and his schedule, um, Grace City music and the team. He's not, it's not up to him to get up in the morning, think about that and going to sleep, thinking about that. And so there's, there's times where it's like, dude, how could he not know that it was my birthday in this meeting and nobody said anything, you know, <laughs> but that's a, that's a shallow, that's a shallow one, but there can be yeah. a lot like deeper ones, man, of like, man, dude, like, but I have to, what do I got? I got to have grace for like that for my leader in the same way that I, I want to have grace for my volunteers and um, and to know that, man, I don't serve man. And that's like the, the thing that like, I think is, especially as you get older, like, like me and you, Julian, it's like yeah. meaning like you get into your early thirties, you start going, Oh man, I can't. Cause now I'm building my life and I'm building my life and things to leave for my kids and, and yeah. X, Z. And it's like, what we, and at the end of the day, you gotta go, man. I don't, I don't work like the world works. I work in a different way. I'm not here to serve. So true. Man, I'm here to serve God, and that's that's what I'm called to do. And so, man's gonna let me down every single time, over and over again. My leaders are gonna let me down. My my leaders under me are gonna let me down. My leaders above me are gonna let me down, and I, that's to be expected, and not to spook me and go, oh, I gotta jump ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, that's that's different. If there's big value things, communication style, going, oh man, I don't want to be communicated to like this as an employee. I should probably go work somewhere else. That's fine. Like that, there are these bigger value theology. There's For bigger sure. things like that. But if 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 they just let you down, I mean, you're you're going to be let down. And and that is a like I just got to grow in grace, man. And that's just like such a huge thing I've had to do over the last ten years of growing grace. For people, myself, my leaders, and give people the grace that I want other people to have for me, you know? Yeah, so true. That's that's huge, man. I mean, grace is one of those things that we tend to 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 lack and forget that we should be doing all the time. Right. And, Especially uh, in the leadership world where we go, man, there's leadership and we gotta we gotta know how to lead each other and we gotta, you know, we're this is the kind of we've all had this kind of content for years now. And it's yeah. like man, we're still going to drop the ball and people are going to lead, lead wrong. <laughs> yep. It's very true. It's very true. And you know, to be honest, most of my, my ministry and all that stuff, never really been super disappointed and never really had like a huge situation happen. I've seen it happen to a lot of people and I've, you know, I'm prayed for them and been yeah. there for them and, you know, things have been pretty easy. And then, and then when I go through it, I'm, for the first time, I'm like, holy crap, like, mm. what am I even supposed to, I don't know how to respond as the person it happened to, you know, for instance, my brother-in-law got fired the, the week of Christmas from his church as the youth pastor, the mm. week of Christmas. And I remember I worked at the same church as him. I was the youth worship leader. And I remember going to his house and feeling like this is the most awkward thing I've ever had to go through. Like, should I quit? Should I should I do this? I? So I just asked him, I'm like, you need to tell me what to do because yeah. I have no idea. And he, and he responded so well. He goes, Julian, this has nothing to do with you. You, you stay 
and awesome. You serve faithfully. You do awesome. what God has called you to do, and you stay you stay true to who you are. Don't let my circumstance determine what your circumstances are. And even though it was a wrongful thing that happened and was awful, he still was honoring. He was still loving. He was still helping me and walking and guiding me to go down the right direction. Right. And right. to me, that kind of leadership that, that hits hard because yeah. he didn't, he didn't talk trash. He didn't bash. He didn't say, yeah, you should leave there because they're wow. this and they're that wow. he honored he loved and he showed he showed me grace and that was a huge life lesson for me because wow. i saw him walk through that and now after i walk through it i'm like okay i i understand this now you know as much as i want to go graffiti this place <laughs> i'm not going to you know i'm not oh. going to i'm not going to do that because the lord has called me to a higher place than that well, and yeah. i'm and my trust and my faith is not in man it's not in the job that i have or the people or the church i work right. for my, my hope and my trust and my faith, it's all in Jesus. And if it's all in Jesus, then right. I'll be, I'm going to be okay. You know, yeah. I, I'm truly going to be okay. I really believe that because he has plans. He doesn't have plans to harm me. Right. He has plans right. to, to do good for my life. And that's what I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to hold on to that, <laughs> to that right. verse for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know? And so, man, right. I, I just think that when it comes to, uh, leadership when it comes to longevity there's one thing that everyone needs to learn and especially when it comes to growth and you mentioned it with gray city music when it comes to growth and when it comes to taking the thing that you're doing to the level that it needs to that you believe that god has called you to do it might take time it might take one foot in front of the other but the one mistake that most people make they give up they just right. stop because they don't see results right away and when you don't see results, it's defeating, right? Like you said, you were expecting a thousand people to show up, 300. That's, that, that could be defeating to most people. That's amazing. But that could be defeating when you're used to bigger crowds, right? right? And But the thing that you have to do, like you said, is put one foot in front of the other and keep doing what you're doing persistently and yeah. constantly. Even with your leadership, um, if you make a mistake as a leader, man, step up and start over and do it again and keep moving right. forward. And you're going to make mistakes. Um, if you're writing music, man, keep writing songs. Most of them might suck, and that's okay. But keep writing songs because that's eventually good. you're going to have a great song. That's if you're good. doing graphic design, man, keep creating your designs. Keep doing what you're doing. If you post it and you're like hoping for 100 likes and you get two, who cares? Keep right. posting. Keep creating what you're called to do because it's not about recognition. It's not about how many likes you get on Instagram. It's not about how many followers you have. At the end of the day, if you're doing what God has called you to do, put one foot in front of the other and keep pressing forward. And when you do that, you're eventually going to become and do what God has called you to do. But Good. most people don't get to that place because they quit and they give mm -hmm. up. And so, mm -hmm. and that's why I say this every single time, every time I post something repost or someone says, Hey, thanks for reposting our stuff. I'm like, Hey, Hashtag keep creating, man. You you right. keep it up. Don't stop and never give up on what the Lord has called you to do. And so even for you, man, I don't know if you even need to hear this, but I know things get weird and hard and and difficult. And you you know, you might feel defeated at times, but same thing. Just chase, keep being chase. Right. Don't try to be anybody else. Right. Don't try to be anybody else that's out there. Just keep creating the way that you create, keep leading the way that God has called you to lead. And even though times get hard and things get weird, it's okay. Just that's keep funny. putting one foot in front of the other. And I just really believe that you're, you're going to go down a path and, and I don't know what it is, man. Some people, when they stay, stay to it and they put one foot in front of the other and they don't give up, there's an annoying thing that comes with that, I believe. Totally. And, and because of that persistence and everything that you're doing, God's going to take you and elevate you even more, you know? And I love to see what you've done with Andrew Gard and what you've done with Grace City and what you're doing with the music and, and God's blessing you, you know? And you might, you might not see it right now in some ways, but trust me, he's there. We see nice. it. Appreciate we all it. see it. Thank you, bro. Yeah, dude. Well, I really appreciate you getting on here with me, man. And you, you dropped a lot of bombs on us today and I really appreciate that. But, um, 
Hey, if you don't already, make sure you follow Chase on social media so you can follow along on his journey. Everything that's happening at Gray City, everything that's happening in his life. Um, I'm telling you, he's a great guy to follow. He's also putting out some new content. Uh, I, I told him earlier that he needs to keep it up. He's been putting out some reels, just dropping little wisdom bombs on, on Insta. And I don't know about you, but if you go through TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff, there's just a lot of garbage out there, right? And I just, I'm trying to get as many people as possible and I'm encouraging them. Just put some good content out there for people to be encouraged and feel loved yeah. and to have a good day. So Chase is doing that. Yeah. He's, I don't know how often you plan on doing it, but keep it up. Thanks, um, man post that stuff, help creatives be even better, um, help people, pastors just continue to, to be better. Follow him. Make sure you follow along on that journey. But Chase, hey, thank you so much for getting on here with us, bro. And I really appreciate you. Julian, love you, bro. Love what you're doing. This whole thing's amazing. Thanks for including me. Yeah, of course. Of course. Hey, if you're um, listening for the very first time, we really appreciate you listening and being a part of Worship and Creative. And this podcast is brand new. You know, we're getting it started. So make sure you share it. Tell the people what's going on. We want to help you be a healthy, creative, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And uh, just stay steadfast in all that you're doing, putting one foot in front of the other, just like we talked about just now. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. Don't ever miss another podcast when they come out. We have so many great guests coming in, some friends of ours, and uh, we're just going to keep growing. We're going to keep going with this podcast, but we appreciate you guys. Love you. We'll see you next time. Peace out.